Hello and welcome and welcome back to those of you that joined us yesterday. This is the second day in our week long webinar series. The idea behind this week long series is to keep you up to date with all the latest information. Firstly, on certification, agreement certification, as we spoke about yesterday. Um, ongoing post certification maintenance, which we will get to on Friday, which is our last webinar. And of course, everything Brexit related when it comes to UKCA and UKTA, of which the next three webinars, this one included, we will cover. Quick note, each webinar and attributing slides will be available on our website and you'll also receive a link after the recording to both. And you'll also receive an email from us at the end of this week with a link to a dedicated web page which has all the slides and all the webinars recorded on it. Also to note, there's still time to register for the other webinars that are going on this week. And what I will do, if I can just add, do admin live on air, um, see if this works or not. Um, yeah, I will post a link now and you can sign up at your leisure, but I'll post that at the end of the webinar as well. That's enough of that and that's enough of promotion for our other webinars. What are we doing today? Today, we're going to look at the UK CA marking and how this is going to impact your business. But first, a little bit of admin as ever. So who are the BBA? What do we do? Well, we look to build confidence. Uh, we help the construction and manufacturing industries and we help throughout the entire supply chain. We look to develop long term partnerships with the idea being that we help our partners with continued growth in both the UK and global markets. And that's so important in this day and age. But it's important to note that we always remain reassuringly impartial. Final point to note is that although the BBA are a for-profit organization, limited by guarantee, the BBA looks to reinvest in the entire construction industry for the benefit of, of everybody that's joining us today, but also the entire supply chain and all stakeholders involved. So moving on to a, a few numbers, and those of you that have joined us before will have seen these because they haven't been updated. The most important number is in the top left. That's the biggest number. Over our 50 year plus history, we've issued over 6,000 certificates. Um, we've done over a thousand annual inspections and there's a few other numbers there that you can digest at your leisure. Uh, needless to say, we are here to help the construction industry. That's enough of that. What are we looking at today? Well, today the clock is very much ticking for everybody when it comes to UKCA marking and making sure you have the right certification for the change from CE marking to UKCA marking. This webinar will help you get to grips with what all the changes are and what it all means to you, your organization and the products you sell. So what, what are you actually going to get out of this webinar? Well, as you can see on the screen, what we're going to cover is how UKCA marking will affect your business, the changes taking place right now, what to expect in the future, and the first steps you need to take to ensure you are ready for this transition. And finally, most importantly, we'll try to answer as many of your questions as possible. So if you do have any questions, please, please use the Q&A function in this webinar. You can ask a question at any time and we'll do our best to cover each question asked at the end. If we don't get round to answering your question, I promise you we will get back to you after the webinar has concluded with a full answer. So please use this feature, it's there for you to use. So who's presenting for us today? Well, there's been a, a last minute substitution and I'm glad to say Mr. Simon Rowe, head of key accounts at the BBA, is joining, joining us today. Um, in his own words, he's been in the construction industry for far too long. Not quite sure how long that means, but that's just say he knows what he's talking about. So without further ado, Simon, it's over to you. Thank you, Peter. Um, yeah, uh, far too long means over 30 years and, and that's at the, at the BBA. Um, on that 
various roles I've had, mainly been technical head of uh, approvals and signatories, materials, engineering products and that, and more recently moved into um, the commercial and really give some technical support to that department. Um, I say thanks to John for uh, preparing the um, um, most of the slides. I presented this also a couple of weeks ago to an international symposium in, in Turkey. So hopefully it's uh, I, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, yeah, we'll do the first slide, Peter. Okay, first is just a disclosure, really. Uh, what we're talking about is, um, you know, to the best of our knowledge and in good faith. Uh, these are mainly issues concerning Brexit and subsequently UKCA and C marking. So yeah, it's best of our knowledge, it's information that's correct at the time of the presentation, but we'll um, give you links during the uh, presentation to the latest government guidelines and their, and their website. Okay, what we're going to talk about, um, we'll see, C marking, what the existing C marking. Um, originally, before the EU construction product regulations, there was the construction products directive. This came in place roughly 1992, and it was replaced by the um, CPR in 2013, I believe. The basis of this was really to give products a passport to the European market. Um, there were two routes. Um, there's one where the products are subjected to mandatory standards, so that's harmonised European norms, or, and the other one is a voluntary route. The voluntary route, obviously, BB has been very much involved in both, but the second one was by products complying with um, European technical guidelines, and these were replaced by European assessment documents. And the whole aim of this um, following Brexit, uh, we've got a parallel system now, which is called United Kingdom Conformity Assessed Products and also the Northern Ireland equivalent. The idea of this, idea of this one is really that they, the, the markings just parallel or mimic the CE marking. So at the moment where, where we've adopted the harmonised standards and the designated standards, and also the um, European assessment documents, we're using the same methodology and, and parameters to give the, the markings. Okay, just um, a table here, really about how products lie under the um, AVCP, it's assessment verification constant performance levels. There's kind of five levels. Um, system four is manufacturer based. Um, they can, it's based on the factory production control and determination of product use. This means a manufacturer doesn't need to go through um, a, a notified or approval body. They can, as long as they um, comply with the standards, they can. Um, put the marking, the C marking or the UK C marking on the product itself. The BBA would get a lot of uh, inquiries coming in, a lot of things about toys and obviously we don't deal with, but especially toy manufacturers, a lot of these are self-regulatory. Um, System three, it's really responsibility, there's a spent to notified body and manufacturer. Notified body is, is testing really and the determination of the product type, this will be issued a, a certificate of test which they can then use to um, get the um, uh, C marking from that. System 2 plus, um, there's a quite a bit of work we do at the BBA here, the notified body, which we're a member, and uh, they need, really need to, it's issuing the certificate of conformity for the factory production control. And part of this, there is a continuous surveillance of the, FP, the factory production control system after they do the initial inspection. The manufacturer's um, requirements are really for factory production control and further testing of samples. And again, obviously determination of product type. Then the other two are a bit more onerous as you go down uh, the levels, system one, um, notified body, you get inspection, continuous surveillance of it, determination of the product type. This will issue a certificate constancy of performance and one plus is the same as the other but there is in addition to that there is audit testing so that's the most um, onerous system again it's a certificate of constant performance which can give the manufacturer then the ability to apply the um, the marking whether that's uh, C marking or UKCA marking on there 
Okay, so what has happened post Brexit? We'll see. We uh, finally, from the first of January twenty twenty one, at the EU, uh, the regulations. So the construction products regulations, in it's now replaced by the UK construction product regulations. European harmonised standards, HCNs, uh, being replaced by Euro UK designated standards. So all EN standards before, whether EN 12345, will become BS EN 12345. CE marking in the United Kingdom market has been replaced said before by UK CA marking, that's United Kingdom Conformity Assessed Marking. Technical assessment bodies, we'll call the TABs, and now UK technical assessment bodies. So you're probably getting the, the drift of this, and basically a few of them are tweaks to the words or UK is being put in front of the notified body, again, UK approved body. Uh, European assessment documents, EADs, um, will be UK approval documents, UKAD. Uh, we said before, e ETA's European technical assessments become United Kingdom technical assessments. The Nando database where all the details of the standards are uh, under each um, notified body. Again, there's a, an equivalent now for the UK market approved data, body database. And there's a link there. So, um, and the last one, the notified body number, um, you'll get a UK approved body number, but I believe with the BBA, we're actually keeping the, the same number. They just have UK in front of them. So hopefully you kind of get the gist of it. It really is a mirror system that's going on for the UK from the EU. OK, what marks um, will, will be affected? Um, so in UKCA, uh, we've got to remember that uh, United Kingdom is made up of Great Britain, that is England, Scotland and Wales, and in addition Northern Ireland. So for the mainland, England, Scotland, Wales, uh, you get the UK CA mark. This is mandatory for all new uh, applicable products on the GB market from 1st of January 2021. Really what to remember there is for new products on there. So for new products, you need the UK CA mark on there. Um, and then obviously from for all products, so it's, that's new or existing, they will be mandatory 1st of January 2022. Um, what's happening during 2021 is that CE marking for existing products that are being placed on the market is still uh, acceptable. Any conformity tasks for the UK CA must be carried out by UK approved body. Okay, um, as said before that United Kingdom is made up of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So what's happening in Northern Ireland? Um, so there is an equivalent mark, UK NI, um, and it's mandatory for all, all applicable products placed on Northern Ireland mark from 1st of January 2021, and again, mandatory for all products January 22. Since we did this one, obviously it's going to be that C marking for the Northern Ireland market will still be acceptable as well from January 2022. So actually, it probably means that the UK NI mark, which can only be applied after you've got the UK CA one, will probably have lit limited use because it will be covered by the C marking there. And what happens at C marking, the EU market? Well, this is going to be mandatory for all applicable products are placed on the EU market. Um, again, conformity tasks must be carried out by EU notified body. So for UK manufacturers, um, any tasks that were previously carried out by the UK, um, they will have to be uh, transferred to an EU notified body for acceptance there. There's some said before, there's a, a link to government guidance, um, various website there, there's general guidance. These uh, conformity assessment accreditation is a link there and a links also to the designated standard. I would probably say uh, click on those links to make sure that the data is uh, or information is up to date. Um, there are things will be especially important will be labelling, you know, dual labelling will be required to, to show UK CA marking as well as the C marking for products. Obviously, a lot of what the BBA do, we're known for Agramont certification uh, for products that don't conform to, to standards. 
on this one. Um, so in effect, nothing really is is, is unchanged. Um, Agrant certification is specific to um, the UK, uh, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, and uh, kind of more or less, it's it's life as normal. Uh, our certificates, where they quote EN standards, over time we will be updating these to uh, BSEN standards as well. So it's very much um, business as normal regarding regarding the Agamont certification and also HAPAS certification for high waste products. Just on that one, the, uh, it's, um, it's unchanged because they're unrelated to the, con well, EU construction products regulations. Okay, so then is UKCA marking, what route do I follow? Um, it will take different forms and factors that depending on the uh, first is which nation your company is based um, and then the markets you sell into. If you're not selling into the UK, then there's probably no requirement or need necessary to go for UKCA marking. The other one is whether your product is covered by a harmonised standard or not. Um, harmonised standards um, if it conforms, it's obligatory, so you need to apply the C marking for um, EU or obviously UKCA for um, Great Britain. Then again, we've mentioned before, the AVCP level, level acetation conformity, depends on that. It's UKCA, it's um, very much the same as the EU. You know. um, other things considered were third party conformity tasks carried out by UK approved body or EU notified body. Um, we will need uh, for C marking on that one, EU notified body to do, will be required and UK approved body um, for, again, Great Britain market. Um, before we left, uh, the BBA was a member of EOTA, the European Organisation for Technical Approval since 1992. Um, and I think there's still 47 bodies left in there over the 27 countries. So we did, the BBA did issue European technical assessments um, and it was a requirement that by 31st of December last year that these were uh, transferred to still be valid. So we went through a process of most uh, manufacturers that still required their ETAs. We transferred them mainly to ETA Denmark and, and a few to other bodies like um, uh, DIBT in Germany on this one, so they still have continued validity. Um, the last thing to consider is whether your product is existing or a new product as well. Just going back to the other one is obviously just to mention again that um, harmonised standards, that's that's mandatory. If it's for um, non-harmonised standards, it's still voluntary. So the UK TA mark, this um, as it was an ETA in the UK, it is voluntary. Um, but obviously, if you go down that route to have them marked, you will have um, possibly substantial marketing um, and, and other uh, advantages for getting your product um, UK CA marked for the market. Okay, which on this one, market by market, which uh, labelling would you? Uh, really require if you've got goods placed on the Northern Ireland market, CE marking is still going, now going to be acceptable um, from first of, uh, well, uh, it still be required, sorry, CE marking um, will still be accepted in Northern Ireland after 2021. Alternatively, you could also have CE marking and UK NI, but as I said before, you can only get the UK NI mark with um, UK CA mark. It can get quite confusing. What's happened just for the Great Britain market, that's England, Scotland and Wales, for 2021 is again the transition. So if you've got existing C marking for existing products, that can still be applied. Um, or you can actually now apply for UK CA marking for harmonised ones. For all products, as I said, manufactured in Great Britain or placed in the Great Britain market from from next year, you'll require UKCA. These are obviously all targets that are set down by government, um, but we say later on, they, they might change the transition period, may be extended to a certain extent. So qualifying Northern Ireland goods, you could have C marking or C marking with the UK and our mark. And the last one, what we know, 
goods manufactured and placed in the market, whether it's manufactured in the UK, going on to there or, or elsewhere, will still require C marking. That situation is, is unaffected. Okay, so all these acronyms and things can get quite um, quite complicated than that. Um, so as I said before, potentially um, a product could require UKCA, a UK and I mark on, on C marks if it's sold in all of the um, EU, Great Britain and Northern Ireland markets. And the requirements are that this, the mark should be positioned separately to avoid any confusion on that. Uh, legislation coming in will allow products meeting Northern Ireland products to will be allowed to bear the C mark after um, 1st of January 2022. This means the UK NI mark is probably going to be fairly rarely applied. But you cannot put a UK NI mark, um, it won't be accepted by the EU, so you'll still need C mark in there. On this one, products have declarations of performance. Um, it will be continued to be required but the UK market as we said before these declarations of performance in the EU are, are going to be renamed declarations of conformity and they'll need separate requirement sheets and reference the UK conformity assessment body uh, where appropriate. We've been working with a couple of uh, manufacturers on this uh, we're kind of they're sending to me their new declarations of conformity and performance will probably um, adapt them slightly to make sure they're anonymous and put them as examples on our website for so we can actually see you know, um, what's going to be required on this at the moment they, they will refer to various ENs um, and that could be fairly complicated um, so we're kind of rather than regurgitating everything twice um, yeah we'll, we'll put examples on there hopefully makes it fairly simple Notified bodies, how do they fit into the equation? Um, so currently, if you have C markings through a European notified body or again for ETA through technical approval bodies, can the BBA carry conformity assessment tasks to support UKCA marking? Um, yes, the answer is um, the BBA is a United Kingdom technical assessment body equivalent to the current tab. So we are designated to issue United Kingdom technical assessment. We are covered for a wide range of construction products in this one. Um, I think we cover all the EADs and ETAGs, barring a couple of fire related ones. Um, and also, in, in addition to that, the, the BBA is a UK approved body. You know, um, so it's equivalent to a notified body you know, for product certification. And that covers the systems uh, 1, 1 plus, 2 plus, and also system 3 testing. So if you require any of these services where it's the assessment systems for one on one plus um, two plus it's the factory production control by our uh, audit inspection department or system three that's the testing by bba test you can contact that um, email address that brexit or bba certs.co.uk or come through direct to me if you require that cooperation so Will EU and UK notified bodies kind of cooperate with it? Well, yes, according to UK government. And the, the statement there, EU notified bodies are required to share information with UK approved bodies when requested by a certificate holder. And UK approved bodies should do the same with EU notified bodies. This will help facilitate the issuing of new certificates conformity where needed without the need to repeat the entire certification process. That kind of covers the whole ethos fairly simply on that one. We are cooperating uh, we are trying wherever possible not to duplicate any work as long as the work has been conducted in accordance with the standards or the assessment documents you know, and they have the necessary approval so the equivalent of, uh, of a UCAS in the UK the national one and the actual agreement that reference page 56 item 3f states uh, Allow conformity assessment bodies to use subcontractors to perform testing or inspect, including subcontractors located in the other party's territory. So existing um, arrangements um, in other countries relate, we will piggyback on those arrangements. Uh, we'll get copies of the assessment reports and test reports and hopefully use and use those for the, for the various marking systems. 
So this one, where do we go for um, existing UKCA if it's factory um, production control level two plus? The existing certification is acceptable and can be converted for a nominal fee. Nominal fee, and I think in this one, you're probably talking 750 to 1,000 pound in the majority of cases. Uh, CE marking, we've formed partnerships with other EU-based notified bodies. We can put you in contact there. And UKCA and C marking, uh, we've put in place partnership arrangements with notified bodies so single audits can be used as a basis for certification. So if we're giving a UKCA marking to a, a, to a European based manufacturer, they've got a EU notified body going in, the BBA will, will get copies of notified bodies reports of that one and, and use those rather than us going in and doing separate visits. Coming towards the end of the presentation, not too many more uh, slides you'll be uh, uh, pleased to note. Um, notified body testing, current situation, this is um, EU is not accepting UK based notified bodies and retesting has been required. Um, likewise, the BBA's, oh sorry, the um, UK situation, this one, hence we're not accepting um, EU notified body reports. However, We've, we are lobbying for mutual recognition. We've done this with um, MHCLG, that's the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government. At the moment, it's a bit of a standoff situation. With the um, notified body reports regarding United Kingdom uh, technical assessment, slightly different. Um, it's down to the UK approval body whether we accept these reports or not. We got on well with the, these bodies and at the moment uh, there is a data is being passed by the technical uh, EU technical approval bodies so we can um, convert European technical assessments into United Kingdom technical assessments. On this one, as previously said before, Ministry of Housing, Communities, Local Government, they've drafted and this said what they were saying is probably about a month ago. They said it we was in about a week, but we're still not. We haven't received the transitional proposals. On this one, uh, the proposals we are led to believe that approved bodies may assess existing EU notified body reports, and they may be accepted in place of the UK test report. Uh, Provisor there, the reports are, are pre-Brexit and less than five years old. The United Kingdom accreditation. Uh, will be required. Extension, possible of a transition period, could be 18 months. Thereafter, full duplication of testing may be required. And this transitional period may be extended to align with a, a building safety bill. I'd just like to highlight these are provisional and yet to be confirmed. But on this one, I kind of mentioned some manufacturers, especially where fire testing has been done in, um, in the EU. Um, as we probably know, there's only two fire test labs um, in the UK, Exova, Warrington and BRE um, in Garson, where the BBA's main site is. You know, they're at the moment, particularly post Grenfell, they're, uh, they're pretty much full out. If every product was required to have a, another fire test on that, well, they'll be busy for tens and tens of years. So hopefully some sanity will come into the situation from there. Standards on this one. Um, does the BBA cover standards that we need? The BBA has a wide range scope of standards on the existing um, UK schedule. You can look at that uh, 0113 product certification. We also work with UCAS and um, government to simplify the process for new standards. We did have a flexible scope right up to green this year from that and at the moment we are uh, negotiating with UCAS to get that back and the indications are that we should have it back hopefully by the end of June so we can add standards back on rather than going through the whole process of, of justifying each one. Um, then last one, I mean, the whole process, the um, I'd say the UKCA and um, CE marking being mirrored. It all depends on that the, the harmonised standards remain the same as the UK designated standards. Is it automatic that we'll follow them? No, but um, we'd hope that you know, manufacturers, whether it's UK ones and the 
European kind of arms on the standards committee. Now, as long as they keep talking, the standards remain the same, then we should be able to run the system in parallel. In time, though, obviously we do accept that, probably likely in certain areas, that they will diverge at some point in the future. UKTAs, um, you said on this one, but at the moment, we've got EOTA. This is the European Organisation for Technical Approvals, which the BBA was uh, a member of. That uh, is it going to be UK equivalent. Well, there are nine UK um, tabs, technical assessment bodies. They're talking at the moment also with uh, MHCLG on the topic. They're getting to, together, but at the moment, there is no defined group. Um, we expect this will be set up in, in the future. We'll get details of how the BBA operates. So the BBA is, is taking, trying to take a proactive lead on this one. We've approached EOTA. We are now an observer within EOTA, maintain the volume. We have good relations with, I'd say, um, the main players of, um, of the EU technical assessment bodies. We're talking to them on a, on a daily basis. We've got the unilateral agreement with EOTA. So we can use the European technical, sorry, um, European assessment documents and the um, the e tags on there, so we can base uh, our UKTAs on them. Um, so, but all this is still subject to uh, government approval. But we're taking the proactive link, getting things on the table, and you know, so at least we've got something to work on. This also includes kind of details of numbering systems of the UK ADs e-tags and also um, proposals for um, yeah, what the numbers of the ETAs will be. Again, that one, if you've got anything there, please, please contact us. We're quite aware that there's over 6,000 European technical assessments run and a lot of the um, I'd say certain areas of uh, associations such as fixings and fasteners and things, they are very, very keen to um, you know, have UKTAs um, as well as the ETAs on that one. It's um, no, for specification and guidance. Then, yeah, okay, this is the real last slide on this. What should you do next? So we've got general information there on the BBA website, bbacerts.co.uk, UKCA-mark. Um, UKCA marking support, this is relating to the stickers conformity for the, the harmonised standards. So there's, that's the apply for UKCA marking. That's a nice little simplified um, version, you know, those four main steps of how do we get this marking support. And likewise, uh, converting a ETA into UKTA. Again, there's a, a simplified step on this. And, you know, what do we need? We need cooperation with the European Technical Assessment Body. We get the evaluation report. We'll get the manufacturer's technical file regarding factory production control uh, and that should give us the, the basis for issuing the UKTA. Um, other ones, the general one, there's a, an application form and link there. That form is both for marking support and UKTAs. Okay. And that's it. That's all I've got to say. If there's any questions, um, Peter will let me know. But thank you for listening. Simon, thank you so, so much for all that information. I know there's a lot to take in for everybody uh, that, that, that's that been listening. Um, and, you know, there's been a couple of changes over the last few months and we're still waiting for decisions and, and, and things to be finalised. But really appreciate you taking us through that. It was really interesting. Thank you.